Is there anything else you would like to add? Any questions that I haven't asked? Because I will open this up to the juniors in just a minute. Any thoughts, Will? On oh, myself. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, I think that uh, the sport needs you young people to, to be interested and have initiative to move on because we're only as strong as, as our new people. So I, you, you new people have to, I think, I think it's great that you want to be involved in the sport of dogs and learn what you can and be a sponge, learn to be a sponge. And I remember when I first started working for a handler, I, I, I'm sure it is unheard of nowadays, but I did it for free. I just wanted to go to the shows and work and I wanted to learn. And it's, and it, it was that kind of initiative Adam was the same way. Adam was just like a sponge. And it, that makes it, as a handler and a teacher, students like that make it seem all worthwhile. I remember my very favorite garden. This is even including the one we won. My very favorite garden was the year Adam won the sporting group with the Irish setter. Jody Paquette went third with her standard schnauzer. Jennifer McCall McClintock went fourth with their rolling the sheepdog. And Marlene Ness won Cockers that year over the black dog that Michael was showing those top dog all breed. And, and by him do, I hate to see it, by, by Marlene winning that variety, it opened the door to, to Adam winning the sporting group and all those kids worked for me. So I was like in heaven watching that weekend. So it was so much fun watching all these kids just succeed, you know? That is such a good feeling. It, it's, I've found as I've interviewed my book, what motivates certain handlers, it's, it can be very different what, what motivates them. And for me, I love taking a raw dog and a dog that has some challenges and really watching it step into its best self and things that maybe I didn't even think it could overcome, being able to see that dog overcome that. And in many ways, you with these, these kids, I mean, you saw them when they were you know, raw and young and not developed and, you know, Wow, what a feeling to see well, them still standing. Fun. I, follow, I, I still love following them, following them even to this day. I love watching them and I, I do follow them. So that's, that so is yeah. great. You wanted the, I was talking with uh, Sue Forsythe because I interviewed, I'm interviewing her for, to talk about Jane in my book. And she was talking about Jane and how much she would ride her help. She wanted them to be so much better because she wanted someone that compete against her. So she wanted them stronger because she wanted them to be better competitors because then she'd have to fight harder. Oh and I thought that was oh my gosh. Just so much, you know, fun. I mean there there are people that just like to win and there are people that just really enjoy the competing and, and what that brings out in you. And Janie, whenever I saw her, she always she always tried to teach me something. I don't know. Uh, it, it was if I was doing something wrong, she taught me that I was doing it wrong. If I was doing something right, she would, she never would tell you, but she would pat you on the back a little bit. But those people are, are far and few between. She was an amazing competitor. I loved watching her show dogs. I remember watching her and George show Iris setters one year, and I was captivated watching the two of them work out there. And George had worked for Janie a bit, so there, there was, it was interesting watching them work together. So. Yeah, that would be amazing too. To There's say. a story. I was in the ring one time with Adam and we were at some Ira Center specialty and I was right. I was either behind him or ahead of my camera. We were not close enough that we could chat. And he said, he said, I can't show dogs when you're here because I can't do all my moves. I said, because they're my moves. 